Hello traders, this is Orlando for Tradimo and uh, welcome to this week's uh, weekly market breakdown where we break down what to expect on the major currency pairs and the US dollar. Uh, but first of all, before we start, let me let me uh, show you what we provide in our premium services and, and on in our premium uh, Slack community. For example, on Wednesday or last week, I sent out this trade idea to go short on the pound versus the yen at 147.44. Now, let me show you what the pound versus the yen looks like looks like right now. And this is what the pound versus the yen looks like right now. So we took that trade at around 147.44. So actually at this level. And uh, we are now in the money for 228 pips. That's right. 228 pips win from one signal last week. And that um, is all available for our premium subscribers and uh, if you are looking for this kind of service well you're in luck because we have a promotion where we will give you one month trial for just one dollar so all you need to do is go on the link in this video and use the code tradingmofx one and uh, i'll see you guys on the inside in monday if you take advantage of this now let's go uh, and continue with this uh, with this week's weekly market breakdown. So let's start by looking at the uh, economic calendar and uh, the main events or the main um, yeah the main events that we have uh, uh, next week on the economic calendar. So basically we have see uh, uh, the business uh, climate out of Germany uh, on Monday. Uh, well, tomorrow, and this is going to be a big event for the euro. Then uh, we have uh, con the consumer sentiment out of Germany too. Let's see what else do we have. We have uh, the GDP quarter over quarter from France. Uh, we have uh, some housing numbers coming out of the USA and house and building permits. Uh, what else do we have? We have the consumer confidence out of the US, which is a very, very big um, um economic event that will have uh, a uh, reaction from the uh, DXY or the US dollar index or the basically the US dollar and uh, we have the cash rate um, or the um, yeah the cash rate uh, decision out of uh, Australia uh, let's see what else do we have here uh, we have consumer confidence out of Italy. We have uh, the trade balance. This is very important, uh, imp very important event uh, next week because of the uh, of the trade talks where within China and all of these trade wars, uh, the trade war uh, that President Trump has um, uh, been putting the economy on uh, with their tar with its uh, his tariffs, etc. It's going to be very interesting to see. Um, uh, this week's trade balance out of the US. Now let's continue and let's look at what do we have here. Uh, we have the, um, of course, the uh, weekly uh, crude uh, oil inventories out of the US. Uh, and uh, uh, on March 28th, uh, we have the uh, inflation numbers coming out of Germany, the CPI. And uh, of course, we have also. Um, um, see the CPI coming out of Spain. I'm sorry, guys. Let me just uh, go, scroll down, and uh, we have the um, uh, consumer confidence out of the European Union. Now, this is very important for the euro, and we're going to see where the euro versus the dollar is uh, standing at this moment, and um, where can it um, can it be, or what levels are we watching before this important data coming out of the European Union? We have the GDP coming out of the US and uh, um, home sales coming out of the US. Now we have uh, um, uh, retail sales out of uh, Germany and CPI out of France. So as you can see, it's a very, uh, um, very strong economic, uh, well, a uh, very strong week on uh, economic data for the euro okay now uh, let's start by looking at the uh, the dollar index and uh, what has happened since uh, 
uh, well, since it last closed last week. But well, as uh, you remember, we had um, a very uh, dovish economic outlook out of the uh, uh, the U.S., and uh, that's why we made all the uh, w well. That's why the uh, dollar dumped. Uh, all the way to the 95.80 level, which was also some uh, bearish targets at the 261.8. So, uh, but I want to show you where we stand uh, on the daily because that's important. So, as you can see on the daily, we are still trending up. This is a very bullish channel that has been tested once, twice, three times, and the fourth time was on that drop right there to the to the tick and then we started to move up and if you look at the daily we uh, today we open with a very big gap to the upside so in my opinion we could be feeling and continuing up or we can just continue up like uh uh because if you look at the gaps that uh the uh when uh well when the dxy opens with a gap uh it continues on the same same direction that the gap opened so um uh, that's just uh, an observation, right? But uh, basically, what we um, what we are looking here is a very bullish channel, and at least a retest of the 97 level, if not a break of the 97 level, a retest for buyers to jump in and really and really big buyers to jump in, so we ha we can finally have a, ba a big bullish push to break with the with the 97 70 level, which will give us another. Uh, bullish run on the US dollar. So uh, that that's on the technical side of the US dollar, but of course we need to look at the fundamental side on the US dollar. And uh, basically what I'm seeing is that, uh, well, the the, pro, uh, the the Mueller probe um, or Mueller just, um, uh, just um, surrender its findings on the uh, Russian collusion probe. And uh, well, uh, the Attorney General just uh, sent out a letter that exonerates uh, uh, President Trump because uh, there was no um, uh, collusion with Russia found bad by Mueller. And also, uh, the trade talks with China are a, apparently in a healthy path. So, uh, all of this can and will be bullish for the US dollar. So, we can. Uh, so, uh, the levels that I'm watching is the 97 level for a test and uh for a break and uh, for more bulls to jump in on the dip and finally break with that 97 70 level all right having said that let's take a look at the euro us dollar and uh, where it's at well the euro us dollar is at a very interesting spot uh right now uh well you guys remember that we have been trading in a very slow uh but still bearish channel uh with clean um uh, well, clean pattern breaks. Here uh, we had a a, um, a rising pennant break, and here a bear flag break. And uh, right now we are at the 61.8 retracement of this move to the upside. But the the level that I'm watching is the 12.52 level, which are these lows, and also a big uh, uh, a very big uh, volume level. Um, I'm going to show you actually the uh, uh, market profile for the entire move. Uh, so right here we have uh, the point of control at the 13, uh, around the 13 level, um, but the point of control is the 1307 level. And as you can see, we broke to the upside and have retested it a couple of times, but now are trading be below that POC. Uh, with uh, the um, uh, the US dollar being uh, uh, bullish in our bias, or well, our, uh, the... Uh, Trade Emo FX crew being by uh, being bullish on the US dollar, we are absolutely bearish on uh, the euro versus the US dollar. And uh, but what what we need to do or what we need to wait for is actually um, a retest. Let me show you what I want uh, out of the uh, euro US dollar. Uh, what I want out of the US dollar is a test of this uh of the level of the 1252 level and then a um pull back to this point of control for a break below the 1252 uh, level and at that pull back we are going to try to find a uh, short opportunity uh on the euro versus the us dollar for the time being we remain flat but this is the level we are looking for or looking at now let's continue and let's talk about gold 
Uh, last week we were we were waiting for gold to break with this uh, uh, bear flag and to test either the um, uh, the bottom of this uh, ascending channel for a pullback or a break on this ascending channel. Now uh, remember that we said that we are very bullish, not very bullish, but we are bullish in uh, the in the uh, the U.S. dollar. That's why we are bearish in gold, and that's why we still have that pending order that we sent out to the premium members on Friday active, all right? Uh, but let's look at the uh, larger uh, outlook. So basically, we uh, we went from the lows at 1283 uh, to the highs uh, at uh, the t uh, 1319, which were which was this uh, very strong area of resistance and the 61.8, right? Of the entire move to the downside. Then we crashed to the downside, and now we are moving inside this bear flag. So basically, what we are looking for here is a break of this uh, of this flag maybe a retest for a continuation of the move up right but because we are we are bullish on the us dollar uh, we are expecting actually a break of this pattern and a retest of the 1295 level which are these lows at the 161 uh the 161.8 uh, retracement of the flag which are the bearish targets so we are looking for a short opportunity in gold and a continuation of the much larger bearish move all right a break above the 1218 1220 level would mean that our bearish idea is no longer valid and we will be uh, reassessing uh, our gold bias now let's continue and let's have a look at uh, uh, let me see. Uh, we are going to have a look at the um, British pound against the US dollar. All right. So now that we are looking at the GBP USD, you can see that, uh, well, uh, it's uh, the uh, 3216 or 3217 level that we had marked right here was a very important level of uh, resistance, which was also a very important vol uh, high volume zone. Let me show right here as you can see this is the market or the volume profile of uh, the entire move to the downside and this is where the most volume was traded so yeah of course that we would have uh, sellers stepping in at this uh, well not only the at this important volume zone but also a previous base the 76.4 it was a very important level and of course we had that triangle formation on on the uh, pound versus the dollar that we were looking at. So now that price has broken with uh, this triangle, it doesn't mean that we are going to go lower because we do have to break with the previous lows, but it's well, it's starting to look very bearish to me, guys. Now, what levels are we looking to the downside? Well, that's easy. The levels that we're looking at the downside are the 3100 level. Let me just uh, correct this because the cording that the, the, uh, the Correct coordinates are the 3100 level, right? And the reason we are looking at the 3100 level is because um, we have this um, uh, this previous low or this previous uh, spike low here, and it's it's uh, it's uh, confluences with the 618 retracement of the entire move to the upside. All right, so uh, that's it for the. Um, uh, GBP USD, of course, that uh, next week we have a very hectic uh, Brexit week. I mean, Theresa uh, May, uh, Prime Minister May, has to uh, step up her game and um, make her deal go through uh, through Parliament or get voted by the Parliament because if it doesn't, uh, the increase, I mean, the uh, odds of a hard Brexit are just increasing and increasing. And for the time being, this is, I mean, this remains very, um, still a possibility. So, uh, very careful by, when trading the pound because, uh, at any news that, that jumps into the cables, uh, the pound will have a, a reaction. So, uh, my advice is that you trade the pound, uh, with less risk than usual and, uh, uh, only trade excellent setups on it. Of course, that uh, I will be uh, sending all my analysis and all uh, my uh, trade ideas to the premium channel. Now, let's move on to uh, 
uh, the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. Now, this is a very interesting uh, currency pair. Um, and I got to tell you guys, I do like to trade the US, US dollar versus the yen. Uh, uh, mainly because of its clean breaks. Now, uh, the yen was trading inside a very bullish channel, um, the white dotted channel. And then uh, we topped at the uh, 112th level, the 112th level, which is a very strong uh, area of, uh, well, uh, resistance, a psychological number, number and previous base, previous uh, strong daily base. So yeah, we uh, ticked out of uh, the zone a couple of times, but the yeah, sellers took control of the market and we started to trade down and then inside of this triangle before we broke to the downside. Now this is the this is the, a similar triangle that we are looking at the pound right now. So uh, when and if we break with the previous low, we might have a, um, a uh, flush on the pound versus the US dollar, right? So what happened here is that we broke uh, with this um, uh, formation and we quickly quickly broke with uh, the previous lows right here and uh, uh, we retested them as resistance before um, before hitting the 61.8 and this previous uh, base which is also a very strong or a very important volume level and I'm going to show you this right now all right and as you can see the volume profile uh, shows you that this is a or this is the point of control, or this is the level where buyers are going to be stepping in to try to take the this currency pair up, all right? But, uh, well, I mean, with the help of uh, a strong dollar, we might have a rush or a um, a strong pullback to this zone again. We might, do, we might have this, and we might even see a uh, test of the 112th level again, all right? Um, that is if uh, the uh, US dollar scenario that we advised on the first chart that we looked at uh, goes through. Uh, but for the time being, I'm going to zoom in on this chart, but for the time being, I do expect a pullback, right? Uh, I mean, I do expect a pullback, but maybe uh, to these zones right here, right? This is a very strong zone of uh, support that we broke to the down, I mean, that we that uh, well where we bounced from before testing the 110 uh, or 110 uh, 110 111 uh, the uh, let me see what level was this the 110 95 level and uh, for a continuation so what, what we might see is just a, a test of this level again for a break uh, or a f and a full break of the 1980 uh, level 109.80 level right to test the lows but again uh we need to see some kind of a pullback for us to decide which way we are going to go with uh, this currency pair but for the time being we are going to be looking at this level which is the 110.53 the 11060 level uh for a possible pullback to and a uh, short opportunity now uh, let's have a look at the uh, last currency pair that we are going to analyze here on this week's uh, weekly market breakdown. And uh, uh, this is going to be the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. Now, if you are a premium member, you already know that I, I uh, hardly trade this currency pair because I did a, a profitability analysis and I realized that I was losing money on the Aussie USD and the NZD USD, on, on the Kiwi, on the Aussie. And that's something that you have to do when you trade for a living. I mean, you have to realize that there's going to be some markets that you are not going to be profitable in. But it doesn't matter. If you're not profitable, you can still analyze them. And the, what I see here, well, we are in no man's land, right? We are trending up inside of what looks like to be a, con a continuation pattern to the downside. Uh, but the, the, the real level that I'm looking at is the... Um, uh, the 70 oh, uh, or the 70.30, the 70.30 level for a uh, maybe a um, um, a long opportunity, right? Uh, what what I'm seeing here is definitely a break of this uh, structure or this ascending structure and maybe a continuation to the upside. 
but that uh, remains to be seen and of course that a strong dollar is only going to help the Aussie move down right and uh, let's just uh, fuck let's go and look at the daily if uh, we actually have a, a break of this and it, if this is actually a flag let's just uh, get some calculated targets on where we could be looking uh, down on uh, the Aussie versus the US dollar right now if this is the break and uh, I mean this is a purely um, technical calculated target this is no how I how I calculate my targets to when the flags break and of course we did miss the entry at the top of the flag but that doesn't matter let's just we're just looking at levels right and uh, the basic level that we're looking is this one right here uh, which is the 6880 level uh, and in my opinion that's way too low so let's go back and uh, let's zoom in and uh, uh, I'm going to show you the real uh, entry that we missed right here. Uh, the real entry that we missed right here was uh, this um, uh, this top of the spike. Now it's important to say that the top of the spike is where I mean, yeah, in hindsight, it's very easy to say that this is this was the exact moment to go short. But let me show you why it was the exact moment to go short. If we take a um, a Fibonacci retracement level and uh, we take the 88.6 let's take the 88.6 again uh, this is the zone that uh, or the selling zone that we were looking at and why is the selling zone between the 76.4 and the 88.6 that's simple because the 76.4 and the 88.6 was just uh, uh, where, we, where, where we confluence with uh, another uh, another technical levels, which was uh, the tick of the, uh, the descending channel and of the ascending uh, trend line of the bear flag. So yeah, that was a very um, high probability setup on the uh, Aussie versus the Australian dollar with a tight stop and a very a high risk to reward scenario but we didn't take it for the time being we are flat on the Aussie US dollar and uh, I welcome that uh, you post um, your analysis on the premium channel for everybody's consideration now again if you like this kind of analysis and if you want to profit like I show you on the GBPY, uh, the GBP Japanese Yen, let me just show you again how this trade is going and uh, where we entered it and uh, we entered it right at this level the 147.44 yep that's the level we entered so basically right now we are up we are up 245 pips on this trade and uh, yeah that's what we do here and if you want to join us I'm giving you a one month free trial for just a dollar with the uh, voucher trade emo fx1 and the link will be in the bio of this video now uh, that's it for this week's market uh, weekly market breakdown and I'm I will see you guys tomorrow at the London Open on our premium Slack channel.